In a couple of days, the Mengchen experimental module will launch and dock with the Chinese space station, marking the completion of a big milestone for China's space program. So what is Mengtian? What capabilities will it bring to the Chinese space station? And what does this mean for China's space program? Let's find out. Now, just for some context, China has been assembling a permanent space station in low Earth orbit since 2021, called the Chinese Space Station, the CSS, or the Tiangong Space Station. These three names refer to the same thing. The space station is the culmination of 30 years of research and development, started in 1992 when China kicked off its crewed spaceflight program, called Project 921. This space station, once completed at the end of this year, will be composed of three parts. You'll have the core module called Tianhe, which acts as the command center, hosting crucial functions like propulsion, power and life support systems, as well as being the main living quarters for the astronauts, with three sleeping areas, with kitchen amenities, with a bathroom, sports equipment, and health monitoring systems. This module was launched in April 2021 and was complemented in July 2022 by a second module called the Wentian Experimental Module. Wentian significantly increased the capabilities of the Chinese space station, acting in many ways as a backup of Tianhe. It has, for example, three backup sleeping quarters, it has backup propulsion and attitude control systems, comm systems, as well as life support systems. But it also brings new capabilities like a larger airlock module from which astronauts will be able to perform spacewalks. It has four science racks dedicated notably to life sciences and biology, as well as attachment points on the outside wall to expose experiments to the outer space environment. But let's focus on the core topic of today, the third and final module, Mengtian. Just like Wentian, Mengtian is called an experimental module because it is dedicated to space sciences. Mengtian has a mass of roughly 20 tons and is composed of three compartments. The most unique one is situated in the center and is called the unpressurized cargo compartment. It is composed of two doors which open up and expose roughly 30 attachment points to outer space. And just like Wentian, there are experiments secured to these attachment points from which they get power, data links, and in some cases, thermal control capabilities. But what's really unique here with Mengtian with this sort of dual door system is that the astronauts are able to transfer payloads from within the space station to outside without having to perform a spacewalk, making the whole process more simple, safer, and faster. The way this works is that there is a smaller diameter subcompartment within the unpressurized cargo module called the payload compartment, and it's basically an airlock chamber. Astronauts can open the hatch between the working and payload compartments and fix experiments on this payload transfer system using a sort of sliding mechanism. The key point here is that astronauts don't have to put any spacesuit on to do this as the payload compartment is pressurized. Once the payload is inside, the compartment is then closed and sealed and the air is pumped out to create a vacuum. A second hatch facing the unpressurized cargo compartment is then opened and the payload transfer system rotates 90 degrees and slides the experiments to the outside. And once this is done, one of the Chinese space station robotic arms can then grab and place the experiments accordingly. Now, it's worth mentioning that this idea of transferring cargo to the outside by using an intermediate airlock isn't exactly a new idea. It's similar to the Japanese Kibo module on the ISS, which is also able to deploy payloads using an airlock, although with lower payload capabilities. The next compartment on Mengtian is the working compartment, which can host a dozen experimental racks. This is the highest number among all three modules of the CSS, notably because Mengtian does not have any backup role for the core module, and so it really maximizes the working space dedicated to sciences. Among the 12 racks on board, there will be three dedicated to the physics of fluids and microgravity, and so that's the fluid physics rack, the two-phase system rack, and the combustion rack, which will notably be used for things like the study of crystal growth, for phase change, and for combustion in space. And these are things that have pretty tangible applications, for example, in you know, pharmaceuticals and metallurgy, and of course, in space propulsion. There will also be a high temperature material sciences rack studying the melting and solidification process of metal alloys, of semiconductors, as well as various nanomaterials. Two additional racks will be dedicated to fundamental physics with the ultra-cold atomic physics rack and the two high precision time frequency racks. The first rack will notably be cooling rubidium and potassium to extremely low temperatures to study certain quantum mechanics phenomena, while the second one will be able to study and verify certain theories regarding relativity using atomic clocks. 
And finally, there will be some multi-purpose racks like the Advanced Aerospace Technology Rack, a Maintenance Adjustment Rack, and three Universal Science Experiment Racks. And these are pretty transversal, meaning that they can pretty much be used to host any science experiments. Finally, the last section of Meng Tian is this so-called resources module or Ziyun Tang. And this is basically the same as on Wen Tian, meaning that it will have this massive 55 meter long solar arrays, which provide 36 kilowatts of power. And it will have also some attitude control systems, as you can see here with these nozzles. And it will have an antenna to communicate with China's ecosystem of Tianlian relay satellites in geostationary orbit. Now, a little bit about the launch. Before Meng Tian launches, the Chinese space station has this sort of L-shaped structure composed of the Tianhe and Wen Tian modules. Meng Tian will launch on a Long March 5 rocket from China's Wenchang Space Launch Center and will dock with the forward docking port of the multi-docking nod. This will only be a temporary position as Meng Tian is equipped with a small robotic manipulator which will transfer Meng Tian to one of the side berthing ports, exactly like what Wen Tian did a couple of weeks ago. And with this, the Chinese space station will have acquired its final T-shaped structure. Shortly after this, the Tianzhou 5 cargo mission will send supplies to the CSS in early November 2022, and a new crew of three Shenzhou 15 astronauts will join the station on board a Shenzhou spacecraft in late November. And this will mark the end of the construction phase of the Chinese space station, a period that lasted almost two years, and it marks the beginning of the operational phase during which the focus will really turn towards space sciences. Chinese astronauts will continuously operate the space station over six month long periods, which is quite similar to what astronauts are doing today on the ISS. In the future, China also has plans to invite foreign astronauts, as previously mentioned by the chief designer of this program, Zhou Jianping, and the space station would also open up to collaboration opportunities with commercial companies. And I'm notably thinking of things like a new smaller reusable cargo spacecraft, which is something we know that CMSA has been looking for. And that's it for this episode. As always, a special shout out to all my Patreon supporters who are essential to this channel. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the Mengtian live stream in a couple of days.